Welcome back. This section of Jupyter In-Depth is all about the notebook application. Four exercises with Python present possible scenarios for reproducible research. I hope that you cannot wait to expand on them. This section will start with making maps with Jupyter widgets. Using IPy leaflet, a series of exercises renders points, distances, and GeoJSON data. IPy widgets deserves another lesson, so interact and basic NumPy usage is explored in the next video after that. Through the GitHub REST API, we can discover all of the notebooks left for us to learn by the Jupyter Steering Council. The GraphQL API gives us a powerful search and modeling tool that we can leverage fully with just a few functions in Python. Twitter is a huge source of daily intelligence. The fourth video in this section covers tweets on topics, tweets by users, locations, trends, trends by locations, and storing trend data from JSON format to Mongo. Leaflet is a complex open source JavaScript library for making maps. The maps are interactive and responsive and have many valuable features. There are Python modules that act as a bridge to Leaflet and this section covers IPy Leaflet, a direct bridge to leaflet.js which allows you to interact with maps as and using widgets. For the first exercise, a dictionary of the named project Jupyter Affiliates is passed as a variable. We plan to plot each affiliate to a map and perform some basic distance calculations, so we need to add a few fields to our data. At the minimum, we need a latitude and longitude for each affiliate. When working with web services and APIs, it is important to review the licensing restrictions and request limits as they are often paid services in commercial use. Take caution to stay within the restrictions provided by the service host or data provider. For each of the entries in the affiliate's record, we can pull a location from Wikipedia. Many landmark types of entries contain coordinates, but the commercial entities are distributed and likely do not contain coordinate mappings. For the moment, we can pull the ones that do using the Wikipedia module. The public GeoLite 2 dataset is available for use and will allow us to generate approximate coordinates for each of the entries in our affiliate list which does not have a corresponding location entry. We will use the city database. The data file can be downloaded from maxmind.com. Using the requests module, Download the files and put them in the local directory. Using the zip file and tar file modules, extract the downloaded files. With both modules, the basic workflow is opening the file and then running extract all on the file object. The CSV data will be useful if we want to explore the data in pandas, however, the database is more useful if working with the module. The MaxMind website maintains a table that states the level of accuracy by country for the data. Any result in the database may be affected by the margin of error and this data is being used in this exercise for academic purposes only. First import the database class from the GOIP2 module. Using database, create a reader object using the DB file just extracted. For each of the entries in the Jupyter Affiliates Dictionary, we check if it has a coordinate. If no coordinate is present, we pull the IP address and check the local database for a coordinate. At this point, our affiliate's record should be complete and ready for visualization. To review the data, create a pandas data frame and pass the affiliate's dictionary to it using the name attribute as the index. IPy leaflet must be installed. Install it with pip or conda and then restart the notebook server, enabling the extension if you used pip. The map is built in the notebook by creating an instance of the map class and passing it some default data and the center point. The marker for the Washington Monument is literally added to the map instance. In the resultant figure, the map center is set to the Washington Monument and a marker is added. The default zoom level is used. For each affiliate, we create a marker instance and then add the marker to the map. The marker title is displayed when the mouse hovers over the marker because of the rise on hover boolean value. Setting the zoom level of the map object has an effect on all rendered windows of the map. The coordinates have to be converted to floats in order to be charted. Float automatically rounds the coordinates, so they are first rounded to 15 significant digits. At zoom level 3, we can see all of the US affiliates. Zoom level 2 will need to be used to bring the European affiliates into view. IPy widgets allows you to link many different types of widgets to values in the notebook. There are integer sliders, text boxes, radio buttons, drop-down lists, and more. For a complete list, check the IPy widgets list in the project documentation. The basic interact workflow involves passing a function to interact and setting the default values for what is passed into the function. Interact then intelligently decides what type of widget will be used for each data type. 
You can build manual workflows as well if you would like to override the widget type. In this instance, the interact manual method is used to add a button to the interaction so that it does not run the code automatically when the cell loads. The code here uses GeoPy to calculate the distance between two points. The map is rendered showing both points and a text return indicates the distance between the selected affiliate and the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado. The Jupyter architecture allows for users to collaborate and focus their energies toward a common goal. Atmospheric studies should be one of them. The IPy leaflet standard documentation illustrates how to load GeoJSON data as a map layer. In order to get the data we need, we first download the data from the EPA affiliate airnowtech.org. Grab tomorrow's file in KML format. We can use the Mapbox to GeoJSON JavaScript package to convert the KML to GeoJSON with a single command. Using npm, install the package globally and then use the to GeoJSON command on the KML file. The resultant text in the console window should be written to a file. Any GeoJSON data should be suitable for mapping in this exercise if you have access to other files or do not want to install to GeoJSON. GeoJSON data can be used to add concurrent layers to the map. A useful layer to add to this map is the forecasted wind velocity. In this case, the atmospheric data boundaries are plotted as polygons. This creates a quick visual display of the data. However, in-depth analysis of GeoJSON data can be performed with packages such as Folium and Matplotlib. The plotted conditions take place within the US bounding box provided in the GeoJSON file. Folium has built-in support for beautiful choropleth maps and GeoJSON data, as well as custom markers and map tiles. By monitoring air quality, we can build applications that look for correlations and events to air quality. For example, an application may look for trends in areas where air quality suffers. Using the function below, the examples from this workbook, and the documentation for IPy widgets, create a widget interaction to take a zip code from a text box and return the air quality data in JSON format. Plot a marker on the map for each entry in the data. You will use interact with the function below to create your interaction. You will need to register with the EPA AirNow API for a free API key in order to run the required requests. That wraps it up for this video. By now you should have plenty of ideas for data experiments that can be run with the simple tools we have learned and built.